Stone Tabernacles. What a beautiful day to come to the house of God. Aren't you so glad to be here? I love every one of you, and I am so glad to be here with you to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's nobody like Jesus. Oh, he's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Let's all stand together and enter into a time of worship with the choir as we sing.
God got up this morning and there were favorable thoughts. Good things that God has in store for his people. Oh, I got to stop. Jesus, the presence of God is here. I have a friend right now that's in Israel. He shared a video this week. We're, we're getting ready to lift up our missionaries in prayer this morning. And I'm going to get out of the way. I have a friend. If this helps us understand why we pray for these people, some of you understand completely, some of you may not. He is in Israel right now and rockets are flying. He is from his window sending and sharing videos of rockets raining down. Literally, it's just rocket after rocket after rocket in this iron dome taking them out. He said, I think it was last night, only like one or two injuries that had happened. But these people face unprecedented, unbelievable circumstances. So this morning we're bringing Michael and Tia McBride from Europe, Moldova, Europe, before the Lord. We're asking God, Jesus, would you open yes. the doors? Open up divine and supernatural resources to them. God, the avenues that are necessary to do your work. God, let there be liberty in worship. Let there be liberty in ministry. Let there be liberty in prayer. God, lift up. Lift up, God, the standard against every enemy that comes against them. Every believer in that country in the name of Jesus. We are bringing prayer requests this morning. The pastor says there are many needs, many requests. These are dire. These are circumstances that we believe that God can touch this morning. Jesus, you see. I say pick a name on the screen. God, you see them in the name of Jesus. Just Karen Turner. Oh God. trust you. You are the healer, God. In all of these circumstances, you're the healer. In Jesus' name, for Carrie Joplin, Javita Smith, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let the healing virtue touch their lives today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. We lift them up before you. We trust you as our healer, and we believe, God, that you'll go into their homes, into the hospital bed, into their circumstance, God, and absolutely wreak havoc. But there's something brought on by the enemy, God, that you will overcome that. In the name of Jesus Christ, we curse every disease and sickness that would hinder the work of God in the name of Jesus in their lives. You may be seated this morning. Isn't it awesome the presence of the Lord? If there's something you need, if there's worry, if there's distress, if there's pain, I'm telling you, my God is here for each and every one of your needs, each and every one of your problems. He is so awesome and mighty. Not only can He take care of it, because He is one of those words that we say, like, can I do that? Yes, I can. Do I want to? Sometimes not. But guess what? He always wants to take care of you. He always wants to come where you're at in that time of need to take care of you. And that's why we love him so much. He is so awesome. So mighty, so mighty. SOC update real quick, guys. Thank you for each and every one of you that have given so far to SOC. Um, right now, as of today, we have one thousand. $98.56 in SOC. So give yourselves a great big hand clap for that. Thank you so much for that. We're not finished. We're not finished, though. A couple things coming up. Next Sunday we will have... Um, yes, next Sunday. Sorry, my brain went lost here for a minute. And I've got it right here in front of me. It's not pitiful. We'll be doing our SOC offering. It will be our final day uh, for offering. And we've got a special uh, treat for you coming to take your offering on that day. So come with your SOC gift that you are willing to give in. And, uh, because it'll be a, a surprise when you come to take your money. So get ready. We're going to have fun with it. Um, 
and so we're looking really, really looking forward to it. Also, April the 21st at 4 p.m., we will have our trivia night. It is $10 a person, up to eight people on a team. So get ready to come out and have some fun. We always have an amazing time at trivia. Uh, I don't do very good at it uh, because I'm just not very smart. And so if it's not thrown in front of me, I'm in trouble. So, but I have no to uh, ride a little bit on my wrist. A little bit of, just kidding. But we will have a good time with it. So come, we'll have a great time with trivia night. And one final thing, and then I will get down and turn this over to Brother Vandermark. Something we've not done in quite some time that we're going to do. We've got several kids um, that are going to be going to junior camp this year. Yeah. So we are looking at yeah, that. So we are looking for a great time of that. Um, and so we are going to have a barbecue fundraiser for the children's ministry. It will start today. So after kids, after, kids, after church, kids will have a board that will they'll be coming around trying to sell barbecue for you. We will have Boston Roast. <laughs> for forty dollars each, they are roughly around nine pounds on an average roll. I do apologize, doing the math, everything's expensive right now. So, at forty dollars for Boston roast, we'll have sides of ribs, and sides of ribs will go for twenty-eight dollars. And so, please support our children. Um, as always, if you buy barbecue from us and you're not happy, you can get back with me, and I will fix it. I promise you that. I don't think you will not be happy. So, with all that said, I do thank you uh, for supporting our children, save our children, and all the things that we have going on. Our church is great at always supporting our children, and we very much appreciate it. Brother Jones has got me thinking about some barbecue right now. It's so good to be a part of a thriving church. God's doing incredible things. All CT ministry events, you can check the church calendar and all of our social media points for dates and details. April Family Challenge is well underway. Amen. Isn't that a good time? Challenging us to reach out, love people, and, and invest in our families. Amen. I believe it can go past April and it can continue to be a culture in our church. Amen. Ladies Ministry Mother's Memorial Luncheon, that is today. There's a lot of really good treats and food over there. It's going to be a great time. Um, immediately after the morning service. And then Section 5 Student Rally, that is this Friday, April 19th. It starts at 7 p.m. at Live Point UPC in West Plains, Missouri. We are taking the scoop for all the students that know what that is. That's the Scooby-Doo van out there in the, in the parking lot. Amen. Be here at, I say, 5 p.m. We need to be here at 5 p.m. to leave to get over there in time. There's a $5 aftershock to follow, and that's going to be a great time. And then obviously Save Our Children Trivia Fundraiser, Missouri District Ladies Conference, April 25th through the 27th in Branson, Missouri. Amen. Why don't we all stand today as the ushers are coming, and then we're going to give to the kingdom of God. I believe in God will bless it today. Lord Jesus, we come before you today, mighty God. Lord, we pray that you bless this fundraiser, bless this offering, God, for the furthering of your kingdom, God. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. I don't know what you came into this place with today, but I want you to know it doesn't matter how far you've gone today. With God all things are possible. Amen. If you need to be renewed in the gift of the Holy Ghost, today is your day. Amen. With God all things are possible.
may not seem like victory, but oh, just wait and see what he's going to do. Watch what he's going to do.
honor in Jesus' name. Thank you for that name, Lord. You are everything in the Find a few folks around you. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. You see an opportunity to greet a new face. Introduce yourself and say hi. Get acquainted. For just a moment. So good to have everybody in the house of the Lord. Try to connect with somebody around you. Your smile may make the difference in their day. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Glorious God we serve. Thank you, Ministry of Worship, for leading us into the presence of God. As it is written, come before his presence with singing. <laughs> if you've ever heard me try, you know I can't carry a tune. But I want to tell you right now, he, he'll take it, tuneless or untuned. <laughs> Tuned or untuned, he'll take it. Aren't you thankful to power of praise? Let's make an affirmation. Nothing's going to silence my praise. No hard place. Oh, thank God for the power of worship. Power of praise. It's good to us and helping us. It's a delight to be back in the house of the Lord, to be able to stand in the presence of God and greet the people of God, minister the Word of God. What a great and awesome privilege it is to be in God's presence. To know that I'm in the presence of the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And to know that he is mindful enough and loves us in as much as he would come and let us feel and sense his presence and peace in this house. Well, I don't have a sermon. We've got a lunch next door. But I would like to talk to you for a few moments, if you'll allow me to talk to you today. It's only a subject, it's only a phrase or two that is in my mind and heart. And I pulled out, do you all know what a woozy doozy is? Or a doozy? Grandma would say, that's a doozy. And then I would hear, that's a woozy doozy. That must have been a souped up doozy. <laughs> but I found one of those sermons in my pile of stuff. And I thought, man, that light the wick. And I didn't feel it. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you what is working in my heart today. And, and it's just Sister Matheny captured it so beautiful on a slide and if projection ministry if you would just I want to talk to you for a few minutes about present troubles in the light of past deliverances I believe God's a God who is faithful the same yesterday today and forever. My wife sent me a, uh, a saying a few days ago, and it's kind of lodged in my heart. And they put it to a slide for me. And here's what she just messaged me this and said On particularly rough days, when I'm sure I can't possibly endure, I like to remind myself that my track record for getting through bad days so far is 100%. And that's pretty good. <laughs> if life is or has been very easy for you, you are abundantly blessed. I looked across this audience a few moments ago and I saw in the faces of members who attend here week in and week out, I saw the attempt to become joyful at the songs of joy, but knowing all along the loss of their child, the loss of their loved one, 
has the pain written in their eyes. I saw situations written on the face of those who are walking through, as the song said a moment ago, wildernesses. And in tough places, in hard places. And I saw them as they worked to struggle through the hard place. And lift their hands and tilt their head back just a little bit in the presence of God. Trying to release a praise. Because against our emotions we do know in our head. That God is good no matter what. We know that. But there are times when you're in something. You're in some kind of situation in life where it's just hard to give God praise. And the report has come that your health is breaking, your family's falling apart, that companion that you trusted is now waning in affection and love toward you, Norman Rockwell's culture has almost disappeared from the United States of America. Did you know that? I was interested recently in some of his... Norman Rockwell was a famous painter in the 1940s. He, he painted a four-part commission on this topic of the freedom from want. And I think I sent a, a picture of that. This is painted in 1942, and this has become known as Norman Rockwell's America. Plenty. 42. So that's going to be the right before, well, the, the trumpets of war, War II had already started, I guess. And, and yet the Great Depression had ended for most Americans. How many 1940s models do we have here this morning? <clears throat> All right, got a few. And uh, you can testify better than I. I'm just reciting what I've read. I wasn't even thought of. I'm still young, Brother Paul Rush. If you were in the first session, you know about that. But Norman Rockwell's America is about gone. Have you read about San Francisco and the streets of San Francisco? Have you read about the human sewage flowing in the streets of... What an America. The nation that forgets God. It's trouble when a nation begins to forget God. Is there any apostolic in the house that says, God, give us revival? Come on, Sister Zitnick, shout it. She sent it to me this week. Give us revival in America, God. And there's always a present distress. There's always the presence of need and necessity. The freedom from want. What an ideal. This is the master theme of the human experience. Is today your needs are all met. Tomorrow it's a whole nother day. It's a whole nother revelation that I'm frail, I am weak, I'm human, and many times I'm not enough. And as one of our great business owners here in the church says, Jesus be a fence. Uh, all around me every day. To need. I don't like to need. Do you like to need? None of us like to say, I have a need. You may be sitting beside somebody that has not voiced at all, has not indicated in any way. I've got it all together, may be written on their persona. But deep down in every si inside of every one of us is a need. There's something that we need because we're human. And we need, if nothing more, we need God to touch us. Oh, we experience that need, set out to overcome it, and then press on into another day and into another need. And as Solomon wrote about it in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said this is the despairing life 
under the sun. And I've come not to discourage you and despair you this morning. I've come today with something on my heart to tell you that every time you face something that you needed and God answered, somehow it was uh, the need was met. Every time you came to an insurmountable odd, to a mountain you could not traverse, and then in just a little while you were able to glance back over your shoulder and see God brought you through it. You've got a 100% success rate to right now. God is a God that's going to care for you. God is God as a God who's going to deliver you. I feel like God's going to stir some old deliverances up. Testimonies in your mind to re- help us remember God did it before. He's going to do it again and again and again. Let tomorrow bring what tomorrow's going to bring. I've got a God who's already in my tomorrows. The pastoral work is often a portrait of hearing reports marginal blessings and measured success and, and people will call and say say uh, you know God God came through Sister Billington you get ready I'm trotting back there to get you because I texted her this week and I said how's that great grandbaby doing and she said A miracle baby. A miracle baby. Trip Moser's been in the hospital, not giving a good report. But prayer was made of the church. Hallelujah. Prayer was made. And you know what God did? God stepped in. And, and when the trouble looked like it was going to win, God said, No, I'm going to add my presence. I'm going to add my blessing. I'm going to add my strength. And before you know it, We got a good report out of the hospital. Let's give the Lord praise. Marginal blessings. Trip Moser. And then I got a text. I think Sister Kathy, what I told her, I said, Sister Kathy, I want you to testify Sunday morning. And she put on an apron and went over there and went to work. I've got her number. <laughs> and I'll have to, she's not here to defend herself, so she <laughs> she stopped me Wednesday night and said, I go tomorrow, my platelets are way down here, and she told me the number. And she said, I'll have to go tomorrow to get an infusion. Let's pray. And so we stopped right there. And we had us a prayer meeting right back there. And I could see worry in her face. And she's always trying to be positive. And she said, well, I went to have the platelet infusion this morning. They didn't have to do it. They were up 18,000. My God did it again. That's why she said, my God did it again. Doesn't that just make your heart leap to know that God is doing it again? So I've just come to tell you this morning, in light of the present trouble, there is past deliverances that you can lean on. God's going to do it again and again and again and again. And so I listen as a pastor, I listen to the reports of those wonderful blessings and it makes me want to get up here and preach again. But that has to be set against those calls that come against the backdrop of human suffering and pain. And the reports of spiritual breakthrough. I just want to say it out loud and it's, it's actually in a tone of commendation. I commend you, Brother Kelly Zitnick. Brother Zitnick went through a dark season here the past two or three years. But I watched... God move in his life recently and and I didn't know why on that Wednesday night that I just felt like sharing that that ministry trial that I went through about preaching on healing were you here did you did I do it I think I did it 
We went through a season where we prayed for a miracle and God gave us a miracle and then six months later, it all came crashing down and I didn't get bitter, but I got, I got doubtful and I just didn't preach, didn't preach. I said, Lord, I'm not going to preach divine healing. Uh, and then he got my attention and I had to get back in the pulpit and say, forgive me, Lord, for not preaching divine healing. And I looked the church in the eye and I said, God's going to heal your body. I'm stepping out on faith. God's going to heal your body. And you know what he did? He started healing people's body. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And you know what he did? He started baptizing people with the Holy Ghost. Aren't you thankful for the power of God? Brother Zitnik heard something about that. And there was a revival that started brewing in his spirit. I say God can give us breakthrough. Preacher, I'm low. But you don't have to leave low. And if it doesn't happen today, maybe it will happen at 10 o'clock in the morning. Or tomorrow afternoon when you're walking through the trial again. Right there in the middle, God can give you a deliverance. Just like he did before and before and before. Yeah. And so that breakthrough report, that report of peace, and I'm not going to be able to share all of these, <coughs> excuse me, real life examples that are sitting in the pew this morning. Victory over besetting sins, moral weaknesses. And those reports come and it makes the minister's heart beat. And then it makes our heart break. Set against the news of health and medical tragedy. Sister Karen Turner is going through a very, very dark time. And uh, news that a marriage is faltering and on the brink of divorce and di a dissolution that call that says, I got laid off today, the job is gone. And uh, parenting crisis, that has been recent. And the list is endless of human, the human suffering list. And so I thank God, how are we going to navigate everything? How are we going to rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep? And all I can tell you is this is the word that he gave me this week. I am enough and I am with you. <laughs> oh, Holy Ghost, speak that into every heart like you did mine. I am enough and I am with you. I am enough and I am with you. I'm enough and I'm with you. I'm enough and I'm with you and you and you. He's enough. Jesus is enough. I don't have all the answers. I don't know how to navigate the issues, but he's enough. Would you join with me and give me an opportunity to shout with my voice and clap my hands right now? Would you join together with me? with the sound of praise the sound of praise for the one who loves us <laughs> you may not know the next step but he knows the next step Entertain him right now, would you? Entertain his presence. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Are the weavers here this morning? Are the weavers here? Can anybody see the weavers? They've been walking through, you know, the past three years has just been 
is terrible. <laughs> Human weakness, giving in to sin. But they were in a crisis here a few days ago concerning a, a legal judgment situation. And prayer was made, and God stepped in. Health, relationships, legal. I'm telling you, he's got you covered. Just look around you and try to find where he's not enough. He's more than enough. I'm kind of going to go on attack right now. I'm going to attack every spirit of fear that would try to grip this great church. I know we're in a, a difficult season right now in many fronts, but I'm still your pastor. And I still God, believe God has got me here on location as a shield, as a kind of protector and a governor and a, and, a, and a shepherd of the flock. And so in that authority, I stand here and I pray a wall about Jerusalem. I pray a wall of fire about this city, the Zion of God, the church of the living. And I pray for every spirit of fear to be quelled right now. Kill it, Lord. Let a love of God baptize these people and let them know you've done it before and you're going to do it again again and again and it's never going to stop the Lord is my salvation the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe you've got somewhere to go in a safe place put a fire about this city of Jerusalem I want to pray right now. I know it's different today. I know it's different, but it's just got to be this way. I want to pray a prayer. I don't even know really if I have a kind of dominion to pray this way. But I'm going to try. My faith says I can reach there. and I believe God will grant it. But I'm going to pray a prayer. And I would love for you to pray with me or seek God about it, it while I'm praying. For... Him to destroy a yoke of repetitive, repetitive human moral failure. Just repetitive uh, up and down. And it's like a, a, a psychosis begins to happen where, okay, I'm just going to expect to fall again. Did you know that He can help you? And and cause you that you will not fall. It is not the will of God that we be overcome by these things that are repetitive, just going on and on and the same old thing, but in the name of Jesus Christ. In whatever capacity you've given me, Lord, I pray an anointing to destroy every yoke of bondage upon the people of God. And I pray for it to be broken today, a repetitive, cyclical sinning. God, break it today. Heal us today. Deliver us today. Somebody in the house, clap your hands and rejoice that God is a God of deliverance. Has he ever helped you once? Shout at me. Has he ever helped you one time? Then pick up your faith. He's going to help you again. He's going to deliver you again. He's going to baptize you again. He's going to lift you up again. He's going to bring you through again. Rejoice not against me. Oh, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise.
I've seen people speak in tongues and rejoice and two hours later be in moral failure. Don't get quiet on me, church. You stand against it, would you? Come on. I feel like you do. Just take a stand. It doesn't mean that we abuse people or hurt people. But I will not have that in my family. I'll not have that in my family. Come on, somebody. You ought to say it. It's not going to be a part of our family. Uh, I'm not calling any names. I'm not doing all this. We're a church. And any time you get people together, there's all kinds of things. There's celebrations going on. There's, (laughs) There's good news happening. And then there's news that we'd rather not hear. But pray for one another. Pray for one another. Make it serious prayer. It's prayer that touches heaven for one another. And if he's ever done it once, he'll, he's going to do it again. And uh, if you're caught up in this repetitive cycle of wondering, is this the thing that's getting ready to take me out? Will this be the test that will crush my faith? No, Simon Peter. You are going to deny what I've prayed for your faith. And when thou art converted, (laughs) strengthen the brethren. Is this the temptation that will reveal yet another flawed thread in my moral fabric? I've come to this CT pulpit this morning to bring you a special message from the heart of God in the throne room of heaven to your heart in this wilderness of life. I am enough and I am with you. You're going to have to have an exercise of memory here in light of all your past troubles. How many of them did God deliver you out of? Did y'all hear that over there? Over here, did y'all hear that over there? You know what he said? He said he testified all of them. I'm in something right now. Present distress. But I'm going to have my deliverance. Let that get a hold of you. Come on, somebody. Let that get a hold of you. My present troubles, when you shine a light on them, they are nothing in comparison to my past deliverances. Ask the prophet Daniel, who was thrown into a den of lions. Some people say, well, it was a lion's den. It doesn't say that. A lion's den can indicate lions present or lions not present. It's just their den. But a den of lions means there's lions in the den. And when they threw him over in that den of lions, let me tell you what God did. God, if I said it like I want to say it, I'd be embellishing. Will you let me imagine for a moment? Don't take this part as the truth. I think he sent an angel down there. He said, that's me. And that lion, we don't know whether they were hungry or not. But if I'm anywhere near a lion, I'm going to assume... (laughs) How many times have you been near a lion and said... He ain't hungry for me. <laughs> Not once. Huh? 
Even the ones at the zoo. I keep my distance. But it's like he landed and they all just looked at him. Somebody said, well, God shut the mouth of the lions. Now you got Bible for that. But what about their paws? Because their nature is revealed in their paws. God not only shut their mouth, he changed their nature. Woo! I feel this for somebody today. You're in something that the nature of it's got to change for it to change. God knows how to deal with ornery headed husbands. Yeah. I said it from the pulpit on Sunday. God knows how to take the most difficult of natures and with one application of His presence one touch of the glory of God change that nature to be more like Him. Come on, pray that husband in. Pray that wife in. Pray those children in. Because the present trouble is not anything in light of your past deliverances. Ask Philip, who watched the Lord Jesus He's standing there in this huge crowd. 5,000 men plus women and children walk up. And the Lord Jesus says to him, Philip, Phil, how much, how much to feed everybody? 200 penny worth, and that's if everybody gets a little bit. And then here comes Andrew. Five loaves, two fishes. And Philip watched as the Lord Jesus took an inadequate supply amid overwhelming demand. <laughs> it wasn't, there just wasn't enough. There wasn't enough and everybody wanted a bunch. Maybe I'm preaching to Sister Holly right now. And he watched Jesus break it off, hand it out. I know I just saw that leave. And as he was breaking it, it just kept multiplying. My God. If you're facing financial situation and there's inadequate supply and overwhelming demand, ask Philip what Jesus can do. Get your faith back out and say, hey, way back there in 1970, Jesus did this, and since he did it in 1970, he can do it in 2024. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hosea, watch God restore his companion, brought her out of a very dark life, and he brought his companion and family back together. Ask that disobedient Jonah. Oh, ask him, that disobedient prophet Jonah, how God can, firsthand, he'll tell you how God can restore a dead ministry buried in the depths of the sea and bring it back to life. And if you can find Abraham and Sarah, find, find them and ask them. Does God ever forget His promise? And Brother Abraham and Sister Sarah will look you in the eye and tell you, there's Isaac. <laughs> Woo! The Bible doesn't glamorize or whitewash the tragedy of the trauma and the humanity of life, but neither does it leave us bound in chains of hopelessness and despair. By not telling us that we have a God who is greater. A God who is mightier. And you've heard it. You've probably heard it scores of times. But one more time I want to tell you. He said this week, I am enough. And I am with you.
glance back right now. Glance back for the purpose of faith and look over your journey. Think of a couple of times. I wish I could have testimony service right now. Because there's people in this room that God has done marvelous and miraculous things for you. And tomorrow, the next day, and if men have their way, 20, 30, whatever you face, be it individual, be it moral, be it internal, external, globally, regionally, whatever we face, please remember this. He said, this week, I am enough, and I am with you. You may not appreciate that right now, but as this world cooks, it's cooking, church, it's cooking. Oh, it's going to cook to the point that it melts with fervent heat. Something's brewing in the atmosphere, I'm telling you. I don't have a way to, to just uh, tell you by way of the Spirit. But there is by way of the word a strong impression that the darkness is doing everything it can to encroach, to take in and appropriate the people of God, the light. But in light of your past deliverances, would you leave here today saying, in your spirit, God said, I am enough. I am is enough. Can we preach that a little while? I am is enough. And he said, I am with you. Now, it's already 1146, so we're going we're gonna to bring it to a close. But I really wanted to talk to you for a little bit about the psychology of thresholds. And, and just get you thinking about thresholds in your individual walk with God. God is calling us to holiness. Do you know that? We don't leave here and then go live another life out there and come in on Sunday and live this life. No, we're, we're, this is every day. We want to be like Jesus every day. I feel like everybody knows that just in case. And tomorrow afternoon when he touches you to do something by his spirit, say something by his spirit, take on another step in that walk of holiness. Don't let that be a threshold that you're unable to cross. But say, God, I want to see it as a threshold into a new and living way. Here they are at the bank of the river, bank of the, of the ocean, the sea, the Red Sea. And they're there and, and they can hear in the background. God had just worked miraculously brought them through ten plagues that the Egyptians had experienced and even the people of God experienced a couple, few of those, maybe four of them. And God had just brought them through. Everybody say, He brought them through. One more time, He brought them through. And now they're, they're reaching a place where there's a, it's a, how did my pastor used to say it? He said, here's how he said it. He said, they looked at me like an old mule would look at a new gate. <laughs> you can tell he was raised in the farming country, I guess. And I tried to, I'd never seen an old mule look at a new gate. Has anybody ever seen an old mule look at a new gate? <laughs> so let's, let's pretend here together. Here's a new gate. And that old mule had never been through that new gate. How would you look at, let's pretend you're a bunch of old mules. I'll join you. Now walk up to a new gate. You think that's what an old mule looks like looking at a new gate? That's a new gate. And they're on the bank of the Red Sea. And instead of seeing in eyes of faith, 
We better not knock them, y'all. <laughs> they looked through eyes of fear. And they said, Moses, you brought us out here to die. Was that the truth? Well, we know now there's not the truth. God had a plan. But when you're living in the present distress, it's not always easy to say, hey, y'all, God's got a plan. Look at that new game. Not that easy, is it? But I'm challenging the church today to join me. And let's go on a mission on the next few weeks, months, years, whatever. And every time we hit something that's impossible, instead of looking at it like that, let's say, Woo! Look at all He brought us through! It doesn't change the fact that there's a Red Sea that's impassable right in front of you, but it does take our focus off of the impossible and puts it on what God has already done. Wave your hand if you know He's delivered you. Come on, join me if you would. I know that sounded a little offensive, but would you join me and say, God has delivered me. Look back. Look back over your shoulder and say, look at there what He did. Look back there what He did. I believe God can do it again. I believe God can heal again. God can do it again. I'm not going to let a psychosis of threshold set in to where everything I face now is a new gate. Let's stand together, shall we? All right, I didn't have a sermon, so all of you who wanted a sermon, come back another Sunday. Come back on Wednesday and maybe have a sermon. But I've given you these words that I know He spoke to my heart. And the rest is the is the amalgamation of how all of that fit together. Here are the words. Are you ready, everybody? I am enough. I am with you. Oh, I heard that in my spirit this week. <laughs> Come on. Square your shoulders again, saints of God. Woo. Nobody may get baptized this morning. I don't know. Nobody may receive the Holy Ghost this morning. I don't know. I've told you what he said. I'm enough. And I'm with you. <laughs> oh, preacher, I don't know if that enough water in the baptistry to cover all my sins. Oh, yes. One name is what's going to do it, and that's the name of Jesus. <laughs> clap your hands, little sister. Lift them up high and clap. There you go. She got water baptized last Sunday in the name of Jesus. I see a little brighter smile on her face today. How many has been baptized in Jesus' name? And you got to the water. And the enemy said, I'm not going to let you through here. But the preacher put you down in Jesus' name. And when you came up out of that water, you came up a new creation in Christ Jesus. All right. Now I can tell right now some of you need to dance up a hunger. For fried chicken. And I know there's a prevailing theology that you can't dance unless you feel to dance. You can do it. Follow that if you want to. But I read where he said, come before his presence with dancing. Let's go. Psalm 150 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God. Psalm 150 verse 1. In the sanctuary. Flying fingers in the media ministry. Psalm 150 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Everybody say that's easy. Okay, let's do it. I'm in the sanctuary. I praise God. <laughs> I'm just doing this. You do it how you want to do it. Because you're in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the expanse. That's what firmament means. The expanse of His power. Wow. God, you're powerful. Praise you. 
Let's all do that. Let's praise him in the expanse of his power. Verse number two. Praise him for his mighty acts. You think that's easy? Shout that's easy if you think that's easy. That's easy. God's a big God. God's done great things. You want to try another one? Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Wow, God, you're great. I can praise you. Verse number four. Verse number three. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Everybody got your trumpet? Let's do it. We need to do that again. Get this on camera. Ready? One, two, three. Praise him on the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel. But look what he said. Do it. Oh, this one's too hard. I can't do this one. <laughs> Sister Irma, I've never seen you dance. Can you dance? Can you dance? Get you in your knees. Let's do this. <laughs> My knees are gone. <laughs> Praise him with the timbrel. Oh, God. Come on, somebody. Praise him with the timbrel in the dance. That trumpet was easy, wasn't it? Praise him in the sanctuary. Don't let that threshold stop you. Don't you let that new gate stop you. Praise him with the stringed instruments and with the organ. Come on, praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Well, preacher, let everything that hath breath y'all praising him for every victory he's ever done every victory he's ever given me every deliverance he's ever given me because the present distress in light of past deliverance is over Get out of the aisle for a moment. Have yourself a celebration. Draw a circle around you and say there's victory. God's going to bless. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise together with our breath, our strength. Oh All right, y'all. Are you staring at the Red Sea? Talk to me. Are you staring at the Red Sea? Can you feel... The chariots of the past, the bondage of the past coming down on you. Moses, stretch out your hand. And an east wind blew all night. And the Bible says that when they came through in the morning, that they went through on dry land.
and Moses' sister. <laughs> Got on the other side. And they watched that water crash in on their enemy. Their enemy. Somebody said, oh, that was a that was a peninsula shelf that was only knee deep that they passed through. Wow. What a miracle that Pharaoh could die in knee deep water. And all of his army. But when Miriam got on the other side, she said, ladies, I don't know what them men are going to do, but i tell you what we're going to do, ladies. We're going to praise him with a timbrel. <laughs> Come on, men, join us. Come on, ladies, join us. You're not just doing it because I ask you. You're doing it to the Lord. You're doing it unto the Lord because he's delivered you, because he's given you praise. You got so many deliverances. to the Lord right now. Just thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> You've been so good to me. Whatever I face tomorrow, going forward, I know you're the God who is enough. You're the God who is enough. Shout in Jesus' name. Jesus. So let's go have a victorious week. Should, should it be that you find yourself going right back into troubles and distress and situation this week, please try to use this sermon somewhere. Use this little message somewhere along the way this week, would you? How many will say, I'll do my best to remember? I'm going to do my best to remember. When I hit that Red Sea, when I hit that whatever, I'm going to say, whoa, look at all he's done. <laughs> and let's whip out some praise on the situation and see what God will do. I think he's going to do great things. I just believe that. Great things are ahead of us congregationally. 
global church individually he's got us say it as we close I am enough come on you're acting like you're listening to Jesus because I heard him this week I am enough and I am with you oh hallelujah the Lord bless you Cornerstone Tabernacle you're dismissed in Jesus name listen you got five minutes you got five minutes to just say hi and then hurry and get over next door get over next door donations only mother's memorial god bless you four minutes and 30 seconds